Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In the vastness of the universe, one question echoes through time and space. Who is God? Apostle Michael Orakpo delves deep into this profound mystery, unraveling the nature and character of the Almighty. Explore the attributes of God, beyond human understanding, yet deeply personal. Encounter the one who holds the universe in his hands and knows you by name. Experience the presence, power, and love of God in your life today, revealing the heart and mystery of God. Of our confidence. And this is why we can expect our lives to command dimension that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard nor has occurred to the heart of man. Now, let me show you a few men in scripture who believed these things and see what they did in their generation. Number one, Abraham. <laughs> you know, God took Abraham through a school. As a young man, working with his father, they had some resources that naturally he will anchor his confidence on. And God told him, Genesis 12 from verse 1 to 3, get thee out of thy country. Get thee out of thy kindred. Get thee out of thy father's house. Come to the land that I will show you. If you leave your country, where will you go to? <laughs> you don't have citizenship again. <laughs> Lord, what are you saying? That is when I will bless you. Abraham carried Lot with him, packed some things, some animals. He was looking for security. If you have any other security apart from me, I can't. Left Abraham. Genesis 13, 14. Wonders began. And the first wonder I saw in Abraham's life was in Genesis 14, verse 14 and 15. The Bible said, four nations ganged up against Sodom and Gomorrah. Although the king of Sodom and Gomorrah also invited some of his other friends, but four nations ganged up against them. And they defeated them and took Lot and his family and the whole of Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham heard the news. The first thing to do is to wait. Which, which king is that? How many soldiers did he bring? Do they have chariots? You need to do some studies to know who you are going up against. The Bible said Abraham stood up, took 318 trained servants in his house. Yes, they are trained, but they've never gone to war. You are dealing with a king who came from one battle and invaded another battle and still conquered. So you are dealing with soldiers who have been warriors from their youth. And this is a gang up. And when Kings win war, their morale is high. That's not a place to take servants to. But the Bible said in Genesis 14, verse 14, it said, Abraham divided himself among them. And when I started studying that scripture, there are two possible explanations. One is a theological explanation, the other is a prophetic explanation. The theological explanation is that Abraham divided his army into four so that they would conquer from different angles. But that's not what happened. What happened was a prophetic intelligence. God taught Abraham a mystery. Because God told Abraham that I will make you a great nation. And he said, indeed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. That means, number one, Abraham is a nation. Number two, he's the father of all nations. So when Abraham is competing or fighting against four nations, all Abraham needs to do is to put the status of nations on everybody around him because he's a nation. So Abraham put himself in them. 
So when they went, it became 319 nations against four nations. That's why that battle did not have casualties. And they won the battle and came back. The question I ask myself is, why do these men know these things? That a man received one word from God and it becomes indestructible. Number one, he wasn't afraid of four nations. Number two, he knew a prophetic and a priesthood technology of weaving himself into people so that all of them will carry the same dimension and they will win battle. When they wanted to give him the voice of war, he said, I won't take anything from you. Lest you say you made Abraham rich. He has caught something in God. So for that kind of man, there's no possibility. Do you know what it means for a whole nation to give you their spoils? Even if it's the smallest nation in the world, they give you all their resources and say, take, we give you. You would have become very wealthy. That's something some of us will go and give thanksgiving for. But a man who knows something in God say, I don't need that. I'm richer than that. My wealth is not in things. It's in who dwells on my inside. I carry a God that can make me anything in any situation. And when you study Abraham's life, that was how he became. Imagine when these guys want to die. There's no record that they give their children cows. It's not because they don't give, but those are not their factors they consider. They will lay hands on their children and say, I bless you with corn and wine. They don't need to see corn anywhere. They can produce it from their spirit. I bless you with the dew of heaven. Anywhere you go, the land is open. And you will find these men stand up and they will go. And no matter the situation, they will prosper. That is was speaking about Isaac a moment ago. When Isaac was in Gera, he dug a well, water came out. The people thought he found a good location and they collected the well. He left them and went to another location. When he left, that one dried. He dug another one. The proof that that one dried is that they left it and came to this new one. one the people who advise themselves this thing is not about location is who is digging it's about who is digging there's something about the man Of water. He's not looking for water. He is the water. blessing and he knew they carried the blessing jealously and when they want to die they will tell their children bring me a savory venison that my soul will bless you i carry something i carry it so the possibility is not what is in your account is what is in your spirit i carry something i carry something and isaac blessed jacob jacob went to laban 
Laban saw change him 10 times but the guy can't be small there's a DNA and the guy invented technology carried a stick painted it and every time they are mating and looking they produce in the same order so when Laban chooses this one all the animals begin to produce the one Isaac carries or Jacob carries and the guy carried the wealth of labor. Even Laban said, I have come to realize by divination that God has blessed me because of you. Because of what they carry. They knew something about God. That's where we are coming from. We are coming from an ancestry where nations can subdue us. A family could fight four kingdoms. That's the background we are coming from. So you are not of the order where somebody will sit somewhere and say you are finished and you think about it. No, you can't finish. Where we came from, our DNA is bigger than nations. These are the possibilities we are talking about. Where we come from, we borrow to nations. We lend to many nations. We are bigger than nations. See, when you know these things, you don't pray about some things. They say five people ganged up against you in your office. You say five gather together you will scatter take counsel together and shall come to know our God is in our midst although the enemy may come in but as a flood the spirit of the Lord in my spirit will lift up a standard against them that's where we are coming from so when you look at what they did and you know we are of the same order he gives you an idea who you are so you don't find who you are in the university you find who you are from the heritage of the fathers our ancestors were men that conquered kingdoms as individuals and that's not all we read the life of Moses when he encountered God God sent him to Egypt not with an army is that not a risk you are going to the strongest civilization of your era at least you need an army you need an economic structure you need a funding system. He said, go, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. That means where we come from, even the mightiest among men, we can confront them. Tell Pharaoh, let my people go, that they may serve me. And Moses came with his, a rod. That rod shut down Egypt. That rod shut down Egypt. That same rod, he pointed it to the Red Sea. The Red Sea parted. That thing that was a stick, when God came upon the man, the stick became the rod of God. That's the background that you are coming from. You are coming from a background of men that challenge kings and they go down. You are coming from a background of men that divided seas and walked on dry ground. See, we have forgotten our heritage. That's why Christianity has become drama. We don't know these things. We don't focus on these things anymore. So we just talk. We, we, we are wise talkers. Meanwhile, we are supposed to be a wonder. Isaiah said, I and the children, the Lord has given to me. We are for signs and we are for wonders. The omnipotent one dwells in you. The omniscient one dwells in you. The omnipresent one dwells in you. How come you are like this? Moses entered Egypt with a consciousness that God was with him. And true to it, when they left Egypt, the glory appeared before them. And that glory was not just to fight Pharaoh. The Bible said, when he led them out of captivity, he said there was none among them that lacked. Their shoe grew with them. Their clothes did not tear in 40 years. He gave them water in the wilderness and he gave them meat. Something that looked impossible in the wilderness. How come you are here and you think your hope is in your certificate? Where did you learn it from? You have learned another culture. I'm not saying undermine your learning. I have studied. I have certificates. But my confidence is beyond the salary. Because the fathers that we came from their loins, they were not built depending on external systems how come you think that your value is in the location where you are and everybody is lobbying for human approval when we have not secured divine approval the people that gave birth to us 
all they were pursuing was divine approval and when they had divine approval even in the wilderness they were champions nations came and, and, and you need to study about some of the nations they fought go and read about orc read about bashan some of their warriors were like tigers they called some of them beastly men they were fighting men that looked like beasts all they had were stones but they defeated nation until their fame went abroad they said any territory they pass they lick it up so kings began to pray for them not to pass through their borders the heritage we came from who told us that christianity is about looking like a group of people and talking like a group of people this is a move of wonders this is a move of power that's what our fathers left us go and study the life of daniel daniel was in babylon the headquarter of corruption but the bible said in daniel 1 verse 8 he said he proposed in his heart that he will not be defied by the portion of the king's mate meanwhile you are in Enugu every day you fall into sin Lord forgive me it's not easy it's not easy we have people who have survived in Babylon that's the testimony of our fathers and in Babylon they were not competing with men they were competing with witches and wizards astrologers you are in the university you are struggling with sociology you are struggling with uh, biology you are struggling with chemistry meanwhile your father sat in a class with astrologers people that could read the patterns of the moons and the star and the bible said they were 10 times better than them because they carried an excellent spirit when the hidden queen gave testimony concerning daniel in daniel 5 from verse 11 he said there's a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods he said light and understanding is in him and he has the power to explain hard sentences that's where we came from we are a people that have understanding we carry a mind the mind of christ is it elijah you want to talk about is it david is replete in scripture to show you where you came from and that's why romans 15 4 said the things that were written aforetime he said they were written for our learning so that through patience and comfort of the scripture we might have hope those of you who are ladies here have you read about women in the bible maybe you should go and do a study on deborah maybe you should go and do a study on esther go and do a study on some of the women of scripture it will give you an idea study about people like elizabeth women that have more rank than all the prophets of their generation the husband encountered an angel in on the altar and became dumb the day john was born she has never had any conversation with the husband she said his name is john she was a woman in her era she was not even considered qualified for priesthood but she was more prophetic than all the sanhedrin and all the fathers the john's fathers and the the king's men came say nobody has born this name in this lineage before she said his name is john that means the place zachariah had that encounter she had whispers and when zachariah's mouth opened zachariah said yes it's john she is correct an angel told me so this woman was operating at the frequency of the angelic order these were women that scriptures wrote about why are we like this because we have not took, taken time to study who our god is and to study the dimensions that our fathers walked in christianity is not a religion is divinity expressed through humanity now in order for us to walk in endless possibilities god installed dimensions in our spirits the moment we received christ so that every one of us will command possibilities beyond the realm of the mind and in this conference i will deal with five of them number one is the dimension of faith romans 12 verse 3 it says god dealt unto everyone the measure of faith number two is wisdom first corinthians one 
verse 23 and 24 and 31. He said to the Jews, he said Christ is a stumbling block because they were looking for wonders. He said to the Greek, Christ is foolishness. He said, but to us who are saved, he is the wisdom of God and the power of God. And in verse 31, he said, Christ is made unto us wisdom. That's why 1 Corinthians 2, 16, he said, we have the mind of Christ so we can judge all things. So we have faith in our spirit. We have wisdom in our spirit. And that's not all. We also have the life of God. The life that powers you now is not just the animal life. Man is the only entity on earth that operates by three life. We have a life in our blood. Leviticus 17, 11. He said the life of the flesh is in the blood. We have a life in our soul. He said God breathed into his nostrils. Genesis 2, 7. And the man became a living soul. And then we have a life in our spirit. Genesis 2, 9. He planted the tree of life in the garden. But the man didn't eat it. But John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You don't need to have Jesus to grow and to have intelligence here. There's a life here. But for your spirit to be awakened to God, you must receive Christ. That's why in 1 John 5, 11, he said, this is the record. God has given us eternal life. In verse 12, he said, whoever has the son has life. For the life is in the son. Verse 13, he said, these things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. So there is a system of life in our spirits. And that's not all. There is also an anointing. The enablement of God to do wonders. Acts 10 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Acts 1 verse 8. Not many days from now, we too, beginning from the apostles, shall receive the Holy Ghost and power and shall be witnesses. So every one of us who believe, there's an anointing. These are systems God put in us for endless possibilities. When God wants to do wonders with us, he doesn't give us a certificate from a university. He can breathe upon a certificate from a university, but when God wants to do wonders through you, these are the credentials he gives you. His wisdom, his life, his anointing, his faith, and all of these things are on our inside. Very quickly, in the next 10 minutes, let me deal with the system of faith. To show you the possibilities that faith commands. And then to show you how to grow your faith so that you too can command those possibilities. It's a system of dominion. It's a system of endless possibilities. Jesus carried it and the patriarchs after Jesus also carried this system. Four things that stands out in the operation of faith. As I list them quickly, number one, faith has control over nature. So when we are talking endless possibilities, it's not just that somebody blessed me with a car. You don't need God for that to happen. In fact, there are people who own car companies who are godless. When we talk about endless possibilities, it's not, oh, in one year, I built a house. There are people who have real estate companies across the world who don't believe in God. God can do all of those things. But when we talk endless possibilities, we are talking realms where no natural man can operate. Because if a natural man can operate there, then you don't necessarily need to give tributes to God because people are doing it without acknowledging God. So endless possibilities are realities in realms where natural abilities can never work. And number one is control over nature. God has given us through faith the power to regulate nature. And I show you a few of them instances very quickly in the Bible. Number one, John 2 from verse 1 to 11. The wine was finished in a wedding feast. Jesus turned water to wine. Endless possibility. Without any ingredient, without any reaction, he turned water to wine. Number two, Matthew 14, 22 to 33. The boat had gone. The Bible said at the third watch, Jesus came walking on water. You know what he's trying to tell us? Nothing in nature should make you stranded. 
because as sons we have control over nature listen in darkness today they are manipulating nature even the fall has manipulated nature the mosquito was not designed to give malaria the mosquito is giving malaria because creation is in bondage and there are astrologers today that can enchant the moon to cause a whole region the moon the moon that you think is just to give life why do you think the bible said the moon shall not smite you at night the sun shall not smite you by day because creation has been manipulated by darkness but it's our heritage as sons to operate and bring liberty to creation that means every one of us here who will function in endless possibility should have the power to alter the possibilities of nature until its potentials are released so somebody can wake up today and carry a tree and do something with that tree and begin to cure incurable diseases that's endless possibilities because if the world will come to seek direction from the church of the last day we must demonstrate a wisdom that they have not seen his answers that will bring the world to us isaiah 2 verse 2 to 3 he said the house of the lord in the last day shall be upon the mountains and nations of the world shall say let us go to the house of the lord for what out of zion proceed the law he said let us go there that they may teach us his ways so we must carry dimensions that make us upgrade nature for us to be able to walk in those possibilities meanwhile this is what the people of the world are struggling laboring for every day but it's our it's at our beck and call creation responds to songs he said the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of god so as you leave this conference one of your heart desire is to be that what can i do to improve nature what can i do to release the potential of nature imagine what jesus did so water can sink a man so there are dimensions in water that can a man can walk and jesus was not only walking because he took off after the third watch the boat left scenes how did he catch up how did he catch up that is a question for another day was he gliding and when he caught up with them peter said if he be thou bid me come he said come this is not something that i'm doing because i'm christ if you have faith you can do it come this is a reality for anybody who believes and peter too took dominion over water so long as he kept his gaze on christ when jesus entered the boat they said they were aground he carried that force and moved the boat to destination instantly that's the realm that we have been invited to a point will come when you can bless water in your house and say anybody who is mad should drink and people are drinking and they are cleansed that's endless possibility a point can come where anything in nature at all we can turn it to improve humanity number two what does the realm of faith command is authority over death you come to a level where nothing dies john chapter 11 you read from the beginning all the way to verse 44 they sent a message to jesus your friend lazarus the one you love is sick to the point of death he didn't say anything after four days lazarus died he said let's go lazarus our friend is asleep they say ah if he's asleep he will wake up now they didn't know he was talking another realm because in the realm of faith death does not exist he said he is asleep anything you call it that's what it is and they said if he's asleep you wake up he said okay let me tell, talk to you in your own language he's dead that was when all of them kept quiet and they went mary met him on the road matter if you were here our brother would not have died he said don't worry he will live again we know on the last day sir we are not talking about the last day we are talking now now faith is faith is not on the last day now faith is now mary came said the same thing as if it was crammed and you will hear them and think oh these people are knowledgeable it's human wisdom jesus shows up at the grave lazarus comfort and they say he that was dead came back to life is called authority over death that's what we have been invited to to rule over things that means nothing dies in your hand 
that's endless possibility they tell you this business has failed until you became a part of it and somewhere the business resurrects it could be wisdom that you inject it could be favor that you inject somehow somehow a business is failing because there's no finances the moment you came funding came and they are wondering what happened it's a realm that you carry nothing you touch dies nothing you touch fails this is what this conference is reminding us that we are carriers of a force that brings life back to anything even if it were dead but you must acknowledge it to walk in it because many christians don't know we think christianity is about i belong to a church we have this culture and we are dancing and singing is bigger than that if that's all we have we have created a court christianity is to raise men who can manifest god and his dimensions and one of the things you carry to manifest god is faith and when you carry it nature responds to you when you carry it even death can respond to you and that's not all the thought in faith empowers you to do is to change circumstances no matter how deteriorated they are this is endless possibilities the power to control circumstances in romans chapter 4 from verse 17 to 21 abraham the bible said god told him he shall be father of many nations and he said who against hope believed in hope that he will be the father of many nations according as god has spoken to him and the bible went further to tell us he is he was important sarah was barren but he said abraham refused to consider it because abraham was being introduced to a new syllabus this place where you are what you consider is what you will have so you come to a point where no matter the turbulence no matter how bad the circumstance is you say no this cannot be the end every challenge becomes a platform for manifestation this is endless possibility that nothing is allowed to overwhelm you nothing is is allowed to end until it's a testimony you come to that level of consciousness because you know there is something i carry it's not about what you are looking it's not about who you are seeing it's about what has been installed something has been installed in me in christ that says no to death something has been installed in me in christ that says no to contrary circumstances something has been installed in me imagine jesus was in a boat the wind was beating against it boisterously what will you do in that situation is it not to say pack 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 or maybe we are the weather is not good for traveling jesus stood up and rebuked the wind and the waves who talks to the wind he knew that there was something on his inside that even nature respects somebody dies he is commanding him he is dead that means he cannot hear what are you calling his name for even a deaf person can hear talk less of a a, a dead person a deaf can hear you are talking to the dead lazarus how do you expect him to hear you that means i'm not talking to his ears i'm talking to the realm where he is i can tell the gate of hell to open i can tell the gate of hades to open that's what jesus knew but we don't know these things a christian thinks christianity is about all you see and touch and that's why when you are talking these realities the people of the world think we are foolish and there are many christians now who have condescended to the realm of the world so even our preaching now we preach it to be reasonable to the people of the world we are not in their realm the bible said we have not received the spirit that is of this world we have received the spirit that is of god that we may know the things that are freely given to us by god he said which things we teach not with words that human wisdom teaches but with words that the holy ghost teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual he said the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god neither can he know them they are spiritually discerned when we talk we expect nature to obey when we talk we expect death to obey when we talk we expect circumstances to change he said my god shall supply all your needs not according to your investment according to his riches in glory not in the marketplace there's a riches that comes from the market there's a riches that comes from investment there's a riches that comes from buying and selling but there's another riches that comes from glory it's not only in the market people can get rich how come somebody has go to a, a herbalist and kills a virgin and suddenly explodes why don't you challenge that 
is it only in church you come to challenge we know the principles that is universal but our life transcends those realms so allow us to express faith it's not to play is it buying and selling that made isaac rich is it buying and selling that made jacob rich does that mean buying and selling should not be what we do we do it but we carry something called the blessing we carry something we carry something we carry something the blessings of the lord make it rich and added no sorrow is the realm of faith we change circumstances listen when men want to change things they walk but when god wants to change things he talks the bible said in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and the earth was void darkness was upon the face of the deep what did god do light be the moment he spoke light I, nobody knew where it was he came out because that's how god works he's called the realm of faith listen sir your business cannot be working learn the principles from the masters learn the principles from the expert but in the morning before anybody comes to the market show up and talk to that business in the name of jesus i command you to flourish there are realms and there are realms who told you your company is dying attend the seminars learn the principles but sir when every worker goes home lock yourself there pack a soba Regete de Sakira, Paragata, Ezezani, Mantoria. The Bible said, God who commanded the light to shine forth out of darkness. There is a place where light dwells. The Bible said, He made all things by the word of His power. He said, All things were made, the visible things were made from the invisible things. That's why I began by telling you, God is creator. Apply the principles. But don't neglect the order of faith. We change circumstances. We carry that grace. We change circumstances. That's what we are doing here. That's where possi endless possibilities dwell. That no, there's no such thing as giving up with you. A fig tree might not blow up. The labor of the olive might fail. See, there may be no sheep in the head. The stock might be empty. They say, but I know something. There is a God called the God of my salvation. I know something. He maketh my feet like hinds feet. He causes me to walk in my high places. So I don't live by circumstances. I live above circumstances. Uh -huh. Where I emerge from this meeting. Please give me five minutes. Let me just round up. Sit down for a moment. Tonight, I'm just setting the coordinates. And then finally, faith breaks protocols. Luke 7 11 to 17. Faith breaks protocols. You can show up they say this is how it is done yes that's how it's been, it's been done but that's not only how it should be done faith breaks protocols luke 7 11 to 14 and it came to pass after that he went to the city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and much people now when he came nigh to the gate of the city behold there was a dead man carried out only son of his mother and she was a widow and much people of the city was with her they had set up the the burial procession at that point you are not even allowed to talk everything is done in a particular ecclesiastical manner but somebody showed up and said stop this procession stops now and the bible said he placed his hand on the coffin and the dead person inside began to struggle to come out See, most of you will begin to interrupt systems. Most of you will begin to interrupt established status quo and protocols. Because see, when the spirit of faith moves, you will try to hold yourself, but you can't. You will just talk. And before they say, what do you mean? The results will show what you meant. 
<laughs> you know when they were rolling the stone away, some people would come say, stop, what are you doing? He's smelling now. Before they concluded, Lazarus, come forth. Why they are saying, what is wrong with this man? They saw the dead person at the door. At that point, nobody talks anymore. Only the master will speak. Lose him, let him go. Faith breaks protocols. So you have the capacity to change even things that are natural. You have the capacity to alter things that are dead. You have the capacity to change any circumstance, no matter how bad. And you have the capacity to break protocols. If you come into this realm, then your possibilities have become endless. That means nothing with you can be quantified. If it were not so, you will change it. If it is dead, you bring it back to life. Nobody can predict you anymore. But it is faith that makes these things happen. How do you build that faith? I list it for you as I round up. Number one, by receiving the word constantly. You know why we are where we are? We are taught by the word. That's why we have the results of the word. The days of the fathers are no more where they sit with the word of God and that's all they know that's all they believe every other knowledge is secondary to it if it is against the word of God they cast it down so you are permitted to learn anything you want to learn so long as it's not against the word of God the moment it's against the word of God you cast down imagination every high standing philosophy that exalts itself above the knowledge of God 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 to 5 until it comes to obedience Romans 10 17 he said this kind of faith comment I'm showing you this so you will know it's not for special people anybody can create any change if we allow the word come faith come by hearing hearing by the word of God this is why Jesus said man shall not live by bread alone if you are a man you need faith and the way to have faith is by paying attention to every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. If you open yourself up to the world today, you'll be shocked. Because faith is a spirit. A point will come when it will well up in you. In the middle of crisis, you won't know when you will talk. They tell you, nobody has been married. The least among them is 34. The oldest is 42. And you show up. By this time next year, you are all married. Before you realize you have spoken, faith has gone ahead. You, you'll be saying, wait, what did I say? Oh God, what if it doesn't happen? Before you know, all of them get married. That's when you wake up and say, what is going on? It's faith. Faith will rule you. If it comes alive. I've heard myself say things that I never planned to say. And lo and behold, they came to pass. Even me knew it was not me. It was what was in me that was roaring. When the word comes, faith is born. And when the word leaves you, power is created. So the one that enters you produce faith, the one that leaves you produce power. Same word with different results. When it's coming in, it's producing faith. When it's leaving, it produces power. Number two, how do you build this faith? By acknowledging every good thing that is in you. Philemon 1 verse 6, that the communication of your faith may be made effectual by the acknowledging. Most of us don't acknowledge what is in us. We only acknowledge what is around us. Business is not working. I don't know how I'm feeling. That's all you acknowledge. When you wake up, tell yourself, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders obtain a good report. I obtain a good report. Wake up. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even a faith, I am born of God. I overcome the world. Acknowledge what is in you. The Holy Ghost dwelt in Christ. The Holy Ghost dwells in me. Christ conquered. I conquer. That's how you release this faith. Why do you think the devil is bombarding you with things? He wants to force you to acknowledge what is around you. What you do is that leave what is happening around you and face what is happening inside you. And as you acknowledge what is inside you, not too long, what is inside you will destroy what is around you. Number three, how do you build this faith? By praying consistently, especially in the spirit. Jude verse 20, you dearly beloved, building up yourself upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Most of you don't pray, that's why you are in your brain. When you pray, you leave your head to your heart. Fact is in your head, God is in your heart. So what prayer does is that it makes you vaporize like a mist into the realm of God. 
and then you start seeing how God see and talk how God talks and receive the results that God commands number four how do you build this faith by taking actions consistently when faith moves you don't stop he said that believers that there's only one God James 2 19 and 20 he said the devil also believes and trembles he said oh vain man don't you know that faith without works is dead so inaction kills your faith when God say move move think later <laughs> how will it happen that's not your business as thou knoweth not how the bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child that is how you don't know the ways of the spirit because even if you contemplate it you can't know some of the things God does with us have never existed Pastor Poju was sharing in Lagos this morning he said imagine what thinking would Peter have done to think that he's an apostle there has never been any apostle until that time all the thinking of Peter is in the syllabus of fisherman meanwhile Jesus said follow me I will make you fishers of men Jesus turned the fisherman to an apostle so thinking would never have made it possible not a thousand guesses would have given him the correct answer because what God wanted to do has not existed that's why you need to come into the realm of faith so you talk what God shows you and the way to do that is by praying listen develop the culture of prayer if you want your faith to be alive and you will need your faith because the Bible said the just shall live by faith finally by trials James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4 it said as gold is tried by fire so also will your faith be tried and when it is tried it produces patience and it says patience makes you perfect and it is that perfection that brings you to the realm of commanding answers don't run away from trials they are there to cook you if you stand your ground and keep declaring what God says that trial will become a school if it will kill you it won't come near you the Bible said in Psalm 91 verse 11 it said seven it said a thousand force by your side ten thousand by your right hand it does not come near you so everything that comes near you are the ones God allow the ones that will kill you God not never allow them come near you so every day at least eleven thousand things fall by your side the two three four that comes to you God allows it to build you up so when any challenge comes say oh Lord is this the next school enter with audacity expecting testimony because if it will kill you it would not have been allowed somebody give the Lord the shot now I decree over you from today your life becomes a wonder from today your faith comes alive from today you receive answers to impossibilities the power to change nature rests upon you the power to change circumstances rests upon you the power to bring the dead back to life rests upon you and the power to turn circumstances around receive it now in the name of Jesus when you leave this conference change the things that inspire you some of you are inspired wrongly that's why your faith is dead in Hebrews 6 12 it says be a followers of them who through faith and patience obtain the promise don't focus on things that discourage focus on things that encourage and build faith and you'll see that your life will become a wonder have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to jesus or you want to rededicate your life to jesus christ as your lord and savior then say this short prayer lord i admit i am a sinner I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. Dot in your precious name. Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.